Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about oropharyngeal suctioning. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. The main learning objectives in this video will be what is oropharyngeal suction? What are the indications of oropharyngeal suction? What are the equipments needed for oropharyngeal suction? How to perform oropharyngeal suction procedure and what are the nursing considerations? What are the complications of oropharyngeal suction? Let's get into the topic now. What do we mean by oropharyngeal suctioning? Oropharyngeal suction is a medical procedure used to remove secretions, mucus, or fluids from the mouth and throat of a patient. The main purpose of oral suctioning is to maintain a patent airway and improve oxygenation by removing mucus secretions and foreign materials. Let's discuss the indications of oropharyngeal suction. First is visible secretions like mucus, phlegm, saliva that obstruct the airflow. Next, difficulty in coughing up secretions and swallowing. Unconscious and stroke patients. In case of a patient who has a stroke, there will be drooling and impaired swallowing and hence oropharyngeal suctioning is indicated. During intubation in order to clear oral secretions so that intubation will be easy. In case of ventilator patient, oral suction is helpful in preventing microaspiration. In case of vomitus in the mouth, after oral hygiene, oral suction should be done for ventilator and unconscious patients. In case of oral surgeries, after certain surgeries, particularly those involving the mouth, throat or airway, patients may experience increased secretions or difficulty swallowing. Oral suctioning can help clear the airway and improve breathing. In case of trauma or foreign body obstruction, oropharyngeal suctioning is indicated where it will be useful to remove blood, debris or foreign objects obstructing the airway. Next comes equipment needed for oropharyngeal suction. First comes personal protective equipment that is gown, mask, goggles or face shield depending on the patient's condition and the risk of exposure to bodily fluids. Next is oral airway if needed. Next is younger suction devices or suction catheter. Next is connecting tubing. Next is suction machine or wall mounted suction device. Next is disposable paper drape. And next is disposable cup with normal saline. Before discussing the procedure of oropharyngeal suction, we need to know about the following suction catheters, younger suction catheter and the regular suction catheter. Both suction catheters can be used for oropharyngeal suctioning. Let's discuss the difference between younger suction catheter and the regular suction catheter. Here is the picture of younger suction catheter and the regular suction catheter. The main difference is younger suction catheter has a specific design which makes it possible to suction the larger particles which is not possible by regular suction catheter. We can understand this more clearly by learning the parts of younger suction catheter. Let's discuss the parts one by one. First comes handle. The handle is present in the proximal end of the younger suction catheter that helps the nurse to hold and control the catheter during suctioning. It is usually made of rigid plastic. Next comes tubing. The handle is connected to flexible tubing that extends to the suction source and it allows for the passage of suctioned materials from the catheter to the suction machine or jar. Next comes the shaft. The shaft is a straight rigid tube that extends from the handle. 
It is usually made of clear transparent plastic allowing for easy visualization of suction material. The shaft is typically long enough to reach the oropharynx comfortably. Next comes the tip. The tip of the Yanker suction catheter is open-ended with multiple side holes. Some Yanker catheters have a round tip whereas some has a bulbous tip. The bulbous tip of the Yanker reduces the risk of tissue trauma. Next comes vacuum control port. Yanker catheter may have a vacuum control port integrated into the handle. This port helps to adjust the suction pressure. Next, let's discuss about the parts of a regular suction catheter. First comes catheter tube. It is a long, flexible and a transparent tube. Next comes the connector. The proximal end of the suction catheter is called the connector. And this is connected to the wall-mounted suction apparatus tubing. Next is a thumb-controlled valve and this helps to regulate the suction pressure. Next comes the tip. The distal end of the suction catheter, also known as the catheter tip, is designed to facilitate effective suctioning. It typically has one or multiple side holes or eyes to allow the removal of secretions or fluids. So this is the difference between the younger suction catheter and the regular suction catheter. In simple way, younger suction catheter is a rigid suction catheter and the regular one is a flexible suction catheter. Let's discuss the procedure for oropharyngeal suctioning. Identify the patient and explain the procedure to the patient. Place the patient in semi fowler's position. Wash hands and wear personal protective equipment that is glove, mask, gown. Pour saline into the bowl or disposable cup. Connect the one end of the connecting tube to the wall mounted suction apparatus or suction machine. Connect the other end of the connecting tube to the yanker. Turn on the suction to the required level. The suction pressure should be maintained between 100 to 120 mm Hg. Test the function by covering the hole on the yanker with your thumb or index finger over a small amount of saline. Insert yanker catheter and apply suction by covering the vacuum control port either with thumb or index finger. Insert catheter along gum line to the pharynx in a circular motion keeping younger moving. Encourage patient to cough. Clear out suction catheter by placing younger in a bowl of water. Replace the articles. Remove PPE and wash hands. Monitor the patient's vital signs including oxygen saturation. Document the date and time of the procedure, pre and post respiratory status after suctioning. Next comes nursing consideration. If patient is on oxygen support, hyperventilate the patient before oropharyngeal suctioning. If the patient is on oxygen mask, switch to nasal prong and then perform oropharyngeal suctioning. Suction pressure should not be more than 150 mmHg and always maintain it between 100 to 120 mmHg in order to prevent bleeding or injury to the oral cavity. Next comes complications of oropharyngeal suctioning. First is trauma to the oral tissues. Next, infection. If proper infection control measures are not followed, Bacteria or viral pathogens can be transferred from suction catheter and create infections. Next is hypoxia. If the duration of the oropharyngeal suction is more than 15 seconds, then there are chances for the patient to have hypoxia. Hence, the duration of suction is always maintained between 10 to 15 seconds. Next is vagal response. Suctioning the oropharynx can stimulate the vagal response which can cause bradycardia or hypotension. This is all about oropharyngeal suctioning. 
If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.